Asking questions in an office situation is an all too common scenario. It is important that both the question asker and the question answerer are cognizant of each other's time and they make adequate preparations. Hey, I've, uh, I've got a question for you real quick. Oh, let me stop you right there because I've got like 20 minutes left of this kitten stream and uh, I'm really into it, so. Five minutes. Try to ask a question the smart way. Be cognizant of others' time and put together a well-defined, well-prepared plan of attack for asking your question. Okay, here, here it is. And I've already, I've done a screenshot and everything. A and there's, screenshot? Yeah, and there's a description of the problem. Like, I've done everything for you so you can do it really fast. When answering a question, remember, there are no stupid questions. You must always be respectful and kind to the people who are asking the questions. Now you've used the word screenshot. Uh, this appears to be a picture you took with your camera phone? Yes, of the screen, because ah. it's, a, it's a screenshot. And then you went ahead and printed that out. Yeah, ah. because it's a screenshot. Well, that makes perfect sense. Now, I'm looking at this completely unformatted blob of text here. And uh, just, just a, a quick read. I'm seeing some stuff about your cats. Mm -hmm. uh, what you had for breakfast? Well, I didn't eat breakfast, but yes. Right, oh, that's covered, that's covered. I'm not seeing any description of the problem. But that's in the third paragraph. Right. Obviously, because well, you need to know, like the first two right. paragraphs give you some background and like how I'm thinking. But, but there the, are no paragraphs. Let's go ahead and agree. But the third are... section right. will right. tell you what my problem is. And the problem I think is a very easy fix. I think you could yeah. help me. Remember, when someone asks you a question, you should always try to be kind and understanding because it's taken a lot of courage to ask the question in the first place. Right, so uh, right now I kind of feel like uh, killing myself after having looked at this. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and get back to my kittens here. And uh, if you could leave, that'd be great. But you didn't answer my question. Yeah, kittens. This is my zen time, okay? And now, let's talk a little bit more in depth about how to ask a question the correct way. So you have to ask a question on the internet. But we can't overemphasize that you really should not be asking questions on the internet. It's a, it's your last resort. You're desperate, you're past your deadline, and nothing else will work. You must ask a question. We've all done it. We've all, we've all done it. Sometimes you have to ask people in your team, not just on the internet, but the internet I think is definitely a much scarier place to ask a question yeah. than a colleague. Let me tell you why you should not ask questions on the internet. One, somebody has already asked that question. That has already been answered. Everything that can be said on that topic exists somewhere on the internet. And if you can't find it, it's your own failure. <laughs> Two, uh, you don't know how to ask the question in such a way as to not waste somebody who would read your question's time. Yeah, when you're asking a question on the internet, it's sort of a delicate, delicate balance. If you say too little and you're too vague, there's going to be 50 people that are going to answer your question in a way that's totally useless to you. Because fake internet points matter to a lot of people. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, I know the answer to this. It's totally obvious because you weren't, you didn't give enough details. But if you write six paragraphs, then no one's going to read it because no one has time for your crap. So you can't go too far and you can't do too little, uh, but you have to tell them everything about your problem, but you can't tell them too much. So you really have to know how to do it. We're, we're here to teach you how to get to the Goldilocks zone. Question, <laughs> question asking. We, we can't overemphasize verbosity is not precision. Some of you guys, you mean well, you post on our forum. Verbosity is not precision. <laughs> and I, I cruise <laughs> right over those posts. I'm not reading five paragraphs of your crap. I just don't care that much. No one does. You mean well, but just, just less, less words, <laughs> TLDR. You gotta think about this in terms of cognitive load. Like this is, you know, this is I think something that maybe Eric Raymond came up with a long time ago. I don't know, I've seen it on the internet a lot. Cognitive load means that the person reading your stuff should not really have to put a lot of work into thinking about what you're saying and and so that means that you have to learn to anticipate the obvious questions and answer those 
but don't answer them in a super verbose kind of way. You know, it's like, it was a cold and dreary Tuesday and I had half eaten my lunch while I was running the diagnostic program to figure out why the blue... It's like, no one cares. No one cares. Things like the version of whatever it is you're using, the exact error codes that you're getting, variables like that that people need to know in order to answer the question are things you must include but you must include in a very succinct fashion. My favorite support ticket ever is I can't print. That's literally the entire ticket. Just, I can't I can't, I can't print. print. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, there's the you know the classic what browser are you using? Oh. Mac. I, oh. That's that is my greatest pet peeve when when you're, someone sends you a screenshot and they're like, well, I'll send you a screenshot of what I'm looking at so you can know exactly what I'm looking at." But then they crop the browser, they crop like you, they're using some sort of weird size that no one, there's never a use case where that use that size will ever be used. But oh. Now, usually in those situations, you can't tell those people what you think because they're paying you. But on the internet, they will tell you exactly what they think and you won't like it. You will feel like a terrible person. And that's okay because, you know, maybe you learn that way. I don't know. And maybe you are a terrible person if you're asking questions like that. Every, but everyone's you can be had better. Yeah. It's about lowering the cognitive load of the would-be person who will answer your question. It's got to be as easy as possible for them to answer the question. So you need laser-like precision to get to that answer inside their brain. I really like doing lists when I have to ask, answer a question like, okay, here's the things I've tried, you know, list. Here's what I think it might be, which I know sometimes people say don't do that, but, you know, and basically give out some scenarios, but just do it in a list form and then have like one or two sentences tops for each item. Because I think that makes it a lot shorter than paragraphs of text. Now, again, when you're asking questions on the internet, you're putting this human element into it. I, one of the things about computer science that they don't teach you in school is the human element. You're like, oh, I like working with computers because it's a, an exact science. And then you meet the people that you have to do the work for. And you're like, oh, God, <laughs> I didn't plan for this. And there's two uh, personality quirks, horrible flaws, you might say, that you have to watch out for in yourself and in others. And that's the Dunning-Kruger syndrome. I don't, is that the syndrome? Effect, Dunning-Kruger effect. effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect. And the imposter syndrome. <laughs> so with imposter syndrome... It is people that actually probably would be good to answer the questions or to get involved don't feel like uh, they should answer the, the, the question. It's, I, there's actually a famous XKCD comic uh, where it's like a, a lot of the people commenting on the internet are top mount stupid. But the people that you actually want to answer the question are in the, you know, the valley of enlightenment or, or, or whatever. And so you, you have to look at the graph and it makes perfect sense. It's like when somebody first learns about something new, they can't wait to tell everybody about the new thing that they learned. But they actually know very little about whatever that is. Yeah, yeah it's the idea of learning enough to know how little you know. And Dunning-Kruger is the opposite of that. It's like, oh, I can answer all your questions, but they shouldn't be. And imposter syndrome means I don't know nearly enough about this to answer your question. And yet they know more than most of the people who are answering the question. <laughs> There's one other kind of person that may answer your questions on the internet, and that is a gatekeeper. And Well, to say that they answer is being generous. <laughs> yeah, the answer is usually not actually useful, but it's apparent that they know the answer, but they're not willing to share it, and they will sort of mock you for not knowing. And that's kind of one of the dangers of not having a baseline understanding before you answer questions or ask your question, because some people are horrible and they get some sort of jolly out of making you feel horrible for not knowing this, the, the basic things they know. Rather than share their knowledge, they want to try to keep you away from the knowledge. Yeah, so you, you might ask a question and, uh, and it's obvious that you're out of your depth in the question that you're answering. So a constructive way to answer that question is you know, something like, well, it's a little more complicated than that. It works like this. Here's some more resources and this other thing. And, and so this is sort of, sort of complicated. And what we see all too often is a response that's more like, huh, noob. Yeah. <laughs> Scrub. The one way that some people will do that to sort of gently do that to you is they will link you to documentation <laughs> that will answer your question. And at that read point, yeah, just, just suck it up and go read the link that they gave you because you need to learn more. Or the let me Google that for you website, which <laughs> is kind of yeah. amazing. It's a little more passive aggressive. <laughs> but not even, it's not even passive though. It's a little just like straight well, aggressive. Uh, 
sometimes you don't know what to Google because you don't know the terminology or you don't know what it is exactly that you're asking for. We get that on the forum sometime too, and I don't, I don't really like, especially if it's a student or somebody like that. They're like, how do I how do I do this? And it's like, oh, there's a term for that. That's this. You know, go read some stuff, and if you're still stuck, come back. That's not too bad. It's it's definitely a more a gentle way of dealing with that. And you know, again, if you encounter that. Just be prepared that you're going to have to spend some time. You're going to have to learn. So these are things that you should be fearful of when you're answering questions. And basically, this just translates into having mutual human respect and mutual human decency. It's like, don't treat people on the internet like morons, and perhaps you will not be treated like a moron when you're stuck on something. Yeah, and if the answer that you're going to provide seems super simple and obvious, there might be a reason <laughs> that that's not the answer that they want. Or that no one else has said that answer in yeah. a reply or a thread that's got like 20 replies in it this is you know this this may not sound like much in terms of answering questions but i have i'm i'm convinced that our human society would be light years ahead of where it is if everyone internalized these sort of simple things yeah another important thing to note is you should uh sort of have sympathy for those who will be in your shoes next and that means when you ask a question and no one answers it inevitably that will happen sometimes <laughs> but you solve it for the love of god go back and answer your own question so the next person who makes that search will have the answer and let's and let's make sure that we say when you say answer don't just say oh i fixed it <laughs> <laughs> which happens a lot also I'll, like actually put what you did that's so, so useful. There's another XKCD comic where it's like, what did you see? Yeah. What did you see when you find that post that's got no answer to it? Last posted to in 2009. <laughs> oh, XKCD, so precious. So, so, so amazing. So nice. <laughs> so if you find yourself asking questions, remember these simple rules and uh, maybe it won't turn out badly. And apply these rules to every interaction you have online. <laughs> uh, doesn't hurt at all. That's pretty much all we've got for this. What are we going to do for the next one in the series? That's an excellent question. How do we, ask how it. are we going to answer <laughs> <On> the forum. <laughs> Forum.level1text.com <laughs> And we'll see you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're still in the workforce. So you need... Oh, oh motorcycle. Blooper reel. Oh, look at me. Look how impressive I am with my motorcycle. <laughs> Brian has a deep-seated hatred of motorcycles. Those are double-pane argon-insulated glass through an 18-inch thick brick wall. And that is still the motorcycle sound you can hear. That is uncalled for. <laughs> and that person's ego is still louder. <laughs> You know, did you try this? Did you try this? Did you try this? You can very succinctly answer those questions. You don't have to tell them that, you know, it was a cold and rainy Tuesday when I did uh, step number you're, 37. You're not going to have to do that again. <laughs> Wait, what? Motorcycle. Oh, oh. good catch. I, didn't, I, didn't, I was like, I don't know what you're dying about. I'm the motorcycle. I was like, you're just doing good. Don't put him down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I got some water. Yeah, I'll just say while we're... Waiting for the motorcycle to go by. And another one. Wow. What is a truck? <laughs> a truck with no muffler. It's I an S10. I can call them at <laughs> 200 yards at this point. And if you if you really want to, and you see that, oh, Jesus Christ, got sirens. <laughs> another type of person who responds on the internet sometimes um, is, is called a gatekeeper, or is, is commonly known as a gatekeeper. And this is somebody who's extra frustrating because they probably know the 